All right, guys, um, injuries from the game. Um, Josh Norman had a lung contusion. Um, be day-to-day, waiting to go further tests for this week. Haywan had a calf strain. He'll be out a few weeks. George Kittle has calf soreness. Uh, he'll be day-to-day. Kinlaw, same thing with the knee. We'll continue to manage that again this week. Armstead, abductor, same deal. Continue to manage. And that's it. Kyle, is Josh Norman, is, is, did Josh Norman get released from the hospital and and just what was the level of concern with him? And and you said that he's he's day to day. Is there a possibility that he could be in uniform and play in Sunday's game? Yeah, there's there's a possibility. You know, he had some fluid in his lungs, and I think that was the scare. Um, and so he had to go to the hospital. He's back. He was in our meetings and stuff this morning. Um, the way that goes, I mean, it's not like concussion protocol, but there's a, he's got to clear some imaging. Um, he's got to pass a CT scan back to practice. And that, from what I'm told, that could take anywhere from one day to um, throughout the week. So we're just going to have to keep monitoring that each day as the week goes. Uh, it wasn't obvious when it happened. What, was, it, did, was there a hit, uh, a, a helmet to the chest, something like that, that happened during the game? Yeah, I think it was on the... I think it was on that third and four um, when he's knocked that ball out over there um, by the pylon. Um, I think the back put his he- helmet right in his chest and just got him in a sensitive area. Looked like. And, and Kyle, just to confirm the report that's out there, he has bruised wounds and then also had bleeding. He, he spit up a little blood, is that correct? Uh, yeah, he did spit up a little blood, which is correct. I, mean, I don't know what exact term anyone has said, but the term I've been given by the doctors. Kyle, after after watching the film and going through this, uh, the game last night, how do you feel about the, the way the team played and, and the way you managed the game? Um, similar to what I said last night, you know, I think we got to play a much cleaner game to beat some good players like um, the other side of the ball like like they had. Um, but I, I know how good we have, players we have too, and our guys made a bunch of plays there at the end of the game to get us back into it on offense and defense. Had a big play on special teams. Um, but there was too many times where we hurt ourselves um, just in some situational football and stuff that, that we gave them too many opportunities, and that's why we didn't have enough to overcome it at the end. Hey, Kyle, in, in each of these, Three games so far. It seems the defense in the fourth quarter. I mean, it's made things a little tense. Obviously, what do you want to see to get them playing maybe more fast or faster and more aggressive? Um, I mean, it's a different answer on each play. You know, I mean, just you you, be, you want to be able to finish the game. I know we struggled in the fourth quarter in two of those games, and this one we had a couple opportunities. But I think it usually comes down to the third down and getting off the field. Uh, we struggled a lot more. I thought with that in the first half, you know, giving up the two big ones on those two PIs happened once in the second half. Um, but uh, we just we got to play more consistently. And I thought we had a number of guys going in and out in the secondary there, which I thought we settled down a little bit. But we got to make sure those guys in the backup roles and stuff, um, the communication through everyone, they're prepared to play whatever position happens throughout that game. Kyle, is there anything in particular that you saw from the Packers that stifled the run game or what happened in that first half? Um, no, not really. I mean, we it, we thought it, it went similar to how we thought it would go. I mean, they put they run the three four defense, or they have those stand up backers on the outside. Sometimes having six guys in the line of scrimmage, it is a little tough sledding, similar to what we got last week. A little bit different style, um, the softer two shell coverages and everything. We thought it would be like that, but you know, especially in the first half, it's, you know, we, we to me we didn't convert any third downs. We didn't convert a third down until. The big hit Debo took over the middle was our first one when we were backed up, went down and um, drove the ball pretty well for a while, crossing the 50 till we got stopped in third and one in short yardage. Um, but no, I think we got to do a lot better on third down, and then, then we will get more run opportunities. Um, I know we were down some backs and stuff, and that always does hurt. Um, but we didn't get the amount of opportunities we'd like to get. Kyle, did, did you consider going for that fourth down from the the third and one you just talked about, the 49, and, and did that? that run dissuade you from from potentially going for it yeah definitely that, that's one i regret a ton i was i knew the whole time that we had two two downs there 
had that play called on the third and one, and I knew I was going to the quarterback sneak you guys saw in the third quarter. I knew I was going to that on fourth down. Um, but on the third and one, you know, I'm a little far away from it, watching from behind. And on the third and one, they yelled something on the D-line, which happens a ton, going on the first sound. And Max snapped it before our quarterback had snapped it um, based off the defensive call. So he was the only one who moved, and no one was quite ready. And thought we lost a yard and a half on the play. So I definitely didn't want to call the call that I had on fourth and two. But I've been looking over. Trey Sermon did a good job of getting back to the line of scrimmage, and I should have stayed with my original feeling. Tyler, is there any second, second. Go ahead, Eric. Uh, as far as the uh, cornerback situation, do you feel comfortable? I mean, is Kirkpatrick, Kirkpatrick ready to play? Do you feel comfortable with Thomas playing um, as well? And then might you still need to add add a corner if, if K1's out for a bit? Uh, yeah, I mean, that stuff we'll discuss this afternoon. I really just finished with the players, but – we got to be comfortable with whoever we have on the roster. I mean, when you get there, whether it's running back or whether it's corner, it's next man up. And, um, you know, the good thing about Dre is he has been in this league for a while. He's been a number of places, and I've really enjoyed what I've seen from him these last two weeks since he's here. Um, but losing K1 um, for a few weeks, possibly Josh Norman, uh, I know that stuff John and everyone upstairs is working on all day, and we'll discuss that later tonight. Kyle, Jimmy spoke after the game about the balance between having the defense on their heels and then also kind of slowing the offense down on that final drive. Uh, do you have any thoughts about that? Um, you mean giving them scoring with time on the clock? Yes, like leaving them 37-ish seconds. Yeah, totally. I mean, that's why we, we worked really hard to not use any timeouts that entire drive. We wanted to run it down. No one wants to give it back to Aaron. Also not going to tell Juice to – not try and score. You, know, you try to dictate that with some play calling. I mean, we had a choice route called, which is a five yard in route or out route based off of leverage by Sanu. And if he's not open, you're just going to go hit it to Juice on your check down. It's usually check downs at the best are about a five yard gain, but Juice ran a hell of a check down and then ran over two people to score. Um, you know, so we had three timeouts, so I'm not telling Jimmy either to run it down yet. You want to get that under 30 seconds and inside the 10-yard line, and then you can control it with your own three timeouts. Um, but the only other option would have been to tell Juice not to score, which is something that you want to do. I mean, it took us seven plays in the second quarter to, to score from inside the 11, five plays from the one to score. Um, so you want to make sure that you get those plays and everything, but you definitely weren't expecting to score on that play. I'm not sure if you mentioned uh, Elijah Mitchell, but uh, wh where is he in his recovery? Um, he's just continuing to rehab. I know he um, couldn't go this week. Um, I'm hoping that it's better signs this week. Was there anything that you were looking more for from the running backs that you picked up, uh, carry on Johnson, the guys that didn't have any carries yesterday? Is there something that you're more looking forward to? to see from them? No, they didn't get a chance in the game. I mean, guys, we, we didn't have a ton of runs in the game, which doesn't have to do with them not running it. It has to do with we didn't get a lot of runs called. We had a lot of RPOs and stuff that we threw instead of run plays. We didn't do that great on third down in the first half, which eliminated some of your runs. We never got going long enough to where our starting running back was tired or anything and had to come out. So that's really how the game would have played out, I think, if anybody was in. If Raheem was in, he would have gotten the majority of the carries. If Aisha was in, he would have gotten it. Trey was in, and he did get the majority, which I think was 10. Um, but we didn't run the ball as much as we usually do. You're not trying to bring in every single – and we're also not trying to bring in every single new person to feature him. Do that when you need to. And then looking at Trey Sermon, what do you have to say about, you know, how can you assess his performance after taking a look at the film? Um, I mean, I thought it was a good good for him in terms of, I think it was really his first NFL game. You know, his first um, play was versus Philly and you know what happened on that. So that, that was a tough one. So him being able to get back in there, really have his first game, um, did some good, some bad. You know, I, I thought his best run of the game was a second and three where we had an unblocked guy in the backfield. It was the opening drive of our third quarter. We, had a, we um, didn't. We missed the nose guard 
on second and three and should have been about third and six, third and seven, and he got it back to third and one, which allowed us to run the quarterback sneak the next play, which led us on a drive to get it back to 17 to 14. But I thought that was a hell of a run. Um, but each game that he plays, the more he goes, I expect him to continue to get better and better. Well, on the other play that uh, Pre- Preston Smith laid a laid a big hit on uh, Jimmy. Was that was that on Trent Williams or was that uh, was that supposed to be a free rusher? No, no, yeah, that was on Trent. Um, got confused with where where the center was going, and the center was going to that side, so he ended up squeezing a play. He shouldn't have squeezed. Left ninety one unblocked. Hey, Kyle, I'm not trying to create a uh, Trent Sherfield uh, snap count controversy, but you, know, you had talked about how one of the reasons Ayuk wasn't playing as much was you know, uh, due to Sherfield's performance. Why did he just play uh, two snaps on offense last night? Um, I didn't think we had that many long drives, and when we did, we went with single receivers sometimes, being in 22 and 13 personnel. I thought he would play a lot more. I tell guys what to do before the game, but I don't keep up with the rotation. I want to make sure to keep Ayuk fresh, and um, West thought Ayuk was fresh enough without being out there in too many long drives that he didn't put Trent in as much, and did a hell of a job in special teams for us too. Kyle, are you expecting uh, Maurice Hurst back to practice this week? Yeah, we are. We're expecting him back. Um, hope to get him Wednesday and hope to get Devontae Harris on Wednesday also. Kyle, in terms of a pass rush, Last one, guys. Both, yeah, in terms of a pass rush, both of us talk about getting chipped by the running back and tight end a lot. Um, what's going on on the other side when, he, when that's taking place? Are you guys not getting enough pass rush from the other people as well? Um, I mean, it depends on the play. I, I think, you know, I th- if we want to see more pass rush, I think we got to get him to hold on to the ball a little bit longer. Um, I think the way to do that is to have him in a lot more third and longs. And I thought they got a little, I thought they got way too much leaky yardage in the game to where I thought we had a run held for four, I mean, for two yards, but they found a way to get four or five. Um, some of the RPOs that they hit on the side, I thought we had a way to stop them for one to two, and they ended up getting about six. You get some of that stuff, and they're not going to hold on to the ball very long. And when guys don't hold on to the ball very long, pass rush is pretty ineffective and when they did they did get some chips um, some were on both so some were on both sides but um, that's really a group effort that all the guys got to do better and so does the coverage all right thank you guys